Yeah, we're going to take a look at how to beat myself at chess. Just a different slant on trying not to make any mistakes, but let's have a look at it from the opponent's viewpoint. In terms of the moves that we've made, and then look at what they're attempting to do and see if we're going to beat ourselves. So they've, they've attacked. Okay, don't look like we're going to beat ourselves in this game because they've gone immediately for the attack there. They've made space for castling, so they're feeling happy that they're going to get castled. They've not taken that opportunity. So we can develop our bishop and hopefully get castled ourselves. They're not bothered about castling, they might castle on the queen side. So what they're basically saying is, I'm going to get my pieces out and then I'm going to have the option of castling king or queen side. I'm thinking to myself, he is going to go castle queen side. So I'm actually going to just start throwing the pawns up towards the queen side. Yep, so now they're blocked down. So it makes their castle look ugly now if they were going to castle on the queen side. So now I don't think that they are going to castle on the queen side just from that one move. So I'm going to happily go and castle on the king side. They might still castle on that side. They might not even castle at all. But they're delaying the castling for some reason. So I want to take advantage of that some reason. What is that reason? I'm going to make some space for my king. My king's got enough company now. Beta pawn. See if we can get more pieces onto the queen side. Does our knight have an out? So we come here. If anything else attacks it like the bishop. Yes, we can come here. We are on the rim. That might not be happy, but we can attack this pawn. But if that pawn moves, we're going to end up on the rim. But it feels nice just getting it there immediately, attacking the pawn. But the pawn then gets defended by the queen. Are they going to queenside castle with the state of a castle like that? Don't think so. So after they've done that move, our knight is here. The bishop then is looking to attack it. So that's the part where we're thinking, well, okay, if the queen has moved here, which they shouldn't, then our knight could go here and get a fork on the king. So I believe the queen would come here to defend, but then it would get taken. So I think this could be a possible way of not beating ourselves. We've looked at all of the positions, so we can take the pawn. Does the knight have an out? Yes, it does. We've got to check on the king. The king is obviously going to attack it. Do we push the pawn to defend the knight so the knight is in this lovely position? Then the knight is, good, is just going to come and attack it. Then our pawn is blocking the bishop. Maybe the bishop comes, but then the knight is there. I'm going to take it. Options and choices. We can come back around. Probably going to get chased a bit. Or do we push the pawn to support the knight? It is elevating the pawn up, but it is also giving them a little bit of attack ability. I think I'm going to move the knight. We can't retract the pawn move from that point. If the king's moving, we can jump back again, attacking the rook. Or we could just push the pawn now to support the knight coming up, attacking the rook. Is there anything else? Bishop, dark square bishop, nothing at the minute. We could go here if the knight takes, queen takes. They'll probably drop the pawn. Don't want to waste motions. I think pushing the pawn, attacking the knight. Also, really, the key thing is we're trying to get back here with the knight. I know we said they've got this, but they've got the main piece is the queen. That could support the attack on here. So we might be sending the knight. No, because it's going to get taken. So we could now go and just jump and attack the rook. Just to make them feel a bit uncomfortable. They may be thinking now. Oh, he's over pressing. So there must be weaknesses in his back end. This pawn's got protection by the king. Bishop can come and attack it. 
but this pawn can simply drop like we've said. We we'll just start ramping pawns up towards their king. I think we'll do that. We're going to take our bishop. So we'll take there. Got space now for the rook to come on this side. Still continue with the pawn push up towards the king to make them feel a bit uncomfortable. But they're probably thinking he's over pressing here. We're going to continue, ooh, but now the knight, the pawn is not protected by the bishop anymore. If we bring this pawn here, and if they take, take, we're still supporting the pawn, and then we can start driving up. The queen is in, attacking the pawn, the rook is defending. I'm not sure if that's a nice place for it, but it does have this. We hit there then he's going to come sliding in here so i think we can continue pushing the pawn yep and then he comes across here then we can block with the bishop pawn drops down we can bring the bishop here continue with the pawn push towards the king No castling from our opponent at all. And they're moving the king again, baiting the pawn to actually attack it. And they're wanting to make space in front of our king. Knight takes as well. And he's going to have the rook facing here against the bishop. So that's probably something we need to stay away from. But we could take the pawn here. The king can take, the bishop will take, but I think the pawn will take. It's on a white square. And then we would get this beautiful fork on the queen. Obviously, we're not going to get that yet because if we take, he takes, and it's protecting that square. But that is a nice square to be for the for the knight. But we're not going to get there. The place we're going to get to is this rook putting a check on the king. So we'll take the pawn. Still mindful of the bishop attacking here. He might sacrifice it. But we can bring the rook up and take the pawn. We need to rush that because he is on a dark square at the minute. So we could just bring the bishop here and put a check on the king. And forcing him to go back so we can put a check on the king here. Almost a checkmate, I think, is that? Is it not? Ooh, nearly. Nearly, nearly, nearly. Whew. Okay, so they moved back. And the bishop is protecting, unfortunately, the knight. So we need more pieces into the game, don't we? Or do we? Bishop takes, bishop takes. Knight takes the bishop away from king. Maybe the bishop doesn't move, though. If we go here, maybe the king just moves. To attack the rook. Yeah, they could do that, couldn't they? So we're on three minutes. We're running out of time a little bit. We could push on to the knight with the pawn. That might be a goer, get rid of the knight, but where are we actually sending the knight to? Probably to a good square. If he comes here, and he's protecting that square, but we'll push on to the king. Let's go with the small move, attacking the knight. The other pieces look like they're in place. They're attacking the bishop, so we can put the check on, like we said, onto the king. He's got options and choices here. One, isn't it? Just one choice there then we can get a queen because the knight will have a the rook will have a check on the king they've offered a draw and this one way to beat myself by accepting the draw when i'm thinking it looks half decent for us so we just click x 
But we get a queen because we've got the check on the king with the rook. Got a place to move to. I think the bishop or the knight is going to block. Hasn't got an up or down. Oh dear, they're kind of angry. They're adding seconds to me. Two lots of 15 seconds, but that really doesn't make any difference to the actual, their time. So their time is still going to run down. Okay, let's um, look at how to beat ourselves. So if we know how to beat ourselves, we know how to win against ourselves. Because most of the time, the actual games that you're playing, once you've developed yourself and you know you're fairly comfortable with your system style, playing playing strategy, etc. Most of the games come down to you actually not making the right move for you. The movement that you know you should have done, but you just didn't do it. For whatever reason, you just didn't do it. So you've beaten yourself. The opponent hasn't beaten you. You've beaten yourself. And that's what I think keeps chess players playing. Because it's the mo it's got to be one of the most difficult games ever. Because you, you keep playing because you just slightly lose. And you know it was your fault. You know? Yes, the player may be really good, and you give, give kudos to them, but if they've just beaten you by having one pawn on the board, that makes you want to come back because you say, well, I'm not going to lose that pawn again. And you just keep going and keep going. There's no knight around here. What is all this about? So I'm just going to hit this pawn here while I'm rambling. on. Looking for a fork here, obviously, but it's a bit obvious. Capture, capture. Bring the pawn. Probably still go for the fork again. So yeah, that's what keeps me going. You know, it, well, it definitely is what kept me going in the early part of playing over the board chess. It was that I developed my online game up to like 1600. So I was like 1600 for a few years online. And, and it felt really good, you know, just being a 1600. And I says, well, let's go out and play some real chess. And then when I came out and played some real chess, I was getting beaten by one pawn, you know, or two pawns or whatever it is, you know, in the end game. I was like thinking, you know, I'm half decent, but why is it that I'm coming back and losing by a pawn or something, you know, something small. And that's what kept pushing me on. I'm not saying all of the games, but the, I would say the key games that kept me going were playing against higher rated players and just losing by one pawn. In the end game so you're spending like three four hours playing the damn game and you lose by a pawn so yeah it keeps kept me motivated let's push on to the bishop where's the bishop going oh yeah he's got this here are they gonna go for this oh my gosh they have as well hey yay 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 wonders will never cease let's bring the rook here the sacrificial bishop you have to be a brave person to do those things. It can work if you've got your pieces set on and everything's aligned for you. Um, but on most occasions, it doesn't work. It's like doing the fried liver type thing. It must have a name for it. They've just mashed up my, my castle, but what they've also done is made access towards their own castle. just move here I can move quickly because um, these are obvious movements that are being made and let's see now he's coming for the bish maybe so 
So I'm hoping he's not got enough pieces in his attack to cause any hassle. Whereas we can start focusing, attacking towards his king area with a few pieces. So what are they thinking? Are they thinking taking here just for a distraction, then getting the queen, putting a check on, going for the trade that way? But then he'll take the knight, so we have to be careful. But the bishop's there, so we don't have to be careful. Oh no, the bishop's not there because the rook would have taken. So that's probably their long-term long plan, is that take here, the rook takes, and the knight is protecting, so I don't think we need to worry too much. And they've actually taken, so we'll go with this, facing their king. So he's not taken the bishop, so we've got one, two, three, three minor pieces, because they've done the sacrifice. We are facing their king. Can we do anything about it? Get the knight up, or do we simply take the pawn and his rook takes? I'm going to take the pawn and let his rook take. What we want to do is this, but his knight is currently protecting, so he will take. That would have been nice, just a little bit of a stunner there. He does have two rooks on the board, though, you know. I'm thinking he's only got one. Let's just attack the knight. Rook, sorry. So he wants to get his rook off the board. Okay. Ten and do. See what we can do to... Not beat ourselves, but... Well, let's keep it in the back of our heads. It's, it is us who beats us. So I'm going to take there. I'm going to take... Big check on the king. Oh, they're not doing. Okay, so we get to save the knight. Attack the queen. We take the queen, no messing. And we attack the knight. If we have a look at this now, have we got more minor pieces than the opponent? The white square bishop's going to come and defend it anyway. Do we actually go and attack it that way? But we are blocking our... Let's go here. Let's get hit here and move to the other side of the board. Really would like to give my king some company, but... One, two. They've got two bishops. We've got three, three minor pieces. Let's attack this pawn with the bishop. They're attacking, so we've got space here to move the knight out of the way. Let's move it. So the idea is now to try and not give up any of the advantage that we've got. Yeah. This is a typical game, a typical example here of where I can potentially end up beating myself. And when I'm saying beating myself, not about losing the game, but losing advantages in the games, you know? And which shouldn't happen, but it does. So I'm going to develop the knight. I'm going to push the pawn, blocking the bishop attacking here. Sometimes it just beggars believe how, so then they're going to come here with their pawn, so we can come here and attack theirs, but then they just defend and the bishop's in the middle of the board, and I don't have anything to defend it when it goes to attack their bishop. If we come here, he's just going to keep ramping the pawns down, but we are attacking, but he just drops the pawn, like we said, and defends. Then the bishop ends up being in trap zone. Come on, let's find it proper. Don't lose the advantage. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Are we castle first? I'm going to castle on the queen side first. We know this is dropping. Then if the bishop's sitting, ooh, got the pawn. We've got the pawn because they have to move the rook. 
Excellent. Okay, so we'll take got a little bit of a babysitter here, which we can attack the bishop. Got some protection here. Excellent. Nice. Okay, so let's take. No pawns can touch the knight now. Does have advanced pawns that bishop is coming through and attacking this pawn. So are we best just basically moving this rook? Going to be pushing if we take then at least we're not losing that knight can come here to attack the rook attacking anything else if it does get hit it can come here attack the pawn pawn hits it okay maybe not move that one maybe move this but then it's not got anywhere it's not going anywhere no point hitting the pawn because it's going to come down hit the knight let's advance in it I'm going to push this pawn towards the king. Okay. Can live with that. Next thing is thinking of this, but it's not going anywhere. This is nice because we can hide in here, I suppose. Let's attack the rook. See if we can get some trades going with the rooks at some point. Jump here, bridging. Is knight going rook going so the knight can come here? I think he's trying to double up on this, isn't he? So we'll go here, we're attacking the pawn, probably going back to protect. Not going back to protect, let's take. And then we've got the rook with a fork, take it off the board, not messing about. So they're moving quick now. So we've got to check on the king so we can actually take the pawn. Check with the rook. I resign at this point. So that's a lot of punishment to take in the few moves. That's the focal point I'm talking about. It's it's when you've got that advantage, how are you going to lose it? The opponent's always hungry to take you down. Especially when you, you're you're in an advantageous position, you've got more pieces on the board, um, and it's so soul destroying when they actually do do it. It happens quite frequently. You look on any chess site and watch a few games, you'll see players up in advantage with pieces or whatever, but the position's shot and they're losing to a pawn or something, or they're getting checkmated by um, a knight or some of the other. And so it is really funny to watch, um, but. It's not funny when it's happening to you and happening to you all the time. So you want to try and kind of knock it on the head and say, well, look, I'm actually winning. How do I keep that winning position or that winning state or the winning plan or strategy? How do I keep that and not lose it? Because the opponent is ready to take it away from you just like that. And as we've done before, let's push the pawns up towards the king side, queen side. If we think that's going to kick off in that side because it looks fairly neat and yet again we mash up the castle on the queen side just from that one move so its intent has worked this square is beautiful for the knight see it mashing up the castle even more on the queen side if they do that oh there's no more castle on that side so let's attack the queen. Looking for this juicy square here with a fork on the. But it's not quite there yet. Got to be mindful of the battery coming through here. Let's have a look at what we can do. There is a pawn attack. Knight attack on the queen. Remove the knight. What happens? It. We have to be very careful that this pawn doesn't get down to nudge it off. Let's take and make some space towards their king. Maybe get a rook here. That's beautiful. Okay, so we'll go here. Nothing protecting that, so they're probably going to have to castle quick time. They haven't done that, so it's probably a checkmate, isn't it? Yeah. 
Okay, nice one.